So I've got some really big projects coming up that are gonna take a lot of milling lumber, a lot of maple. I'm not gonna tell you what it is yet, but I'm sure you can guess uh, that it's going to be a something of some kind. But I needed some more sawhorses and some that I knew were going to be stable, level, and super strong. So I came up with this design. It's a hybrid of a couple other people's design, maybe uh, some Matthias Wandel in there, some John Highs, and they are awesome. They're tripods, so they don't, they're never at a level. I made them so that they stack perfectly. So as you can see, they stack perfectly, so they stay out of the way, and they're super strong. In fact, if you stay tuned to the end of the video, you'll see me jump on one of them and not die because I'm here doing the intro now and these are done. So let's get into it guys uh, by heading out to the loading dock with the new miter saw station. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and cut up all our lumber. Now this is a great project because I'm probably gonna mill these a little bit just because I have old knives on my 24 inch planer so I don't really care about the pine going through it and I kind of want them to be nice for the inside of the shop but really you don't have to. You could just do this with screws and they come out beautiful. I built uh, another pair of these you'll see that you see me use. They're sitting right behind me. I've had for five years and literally they've taken the biggest beating in the world and they are just so strong. So uh, this is an easy project if you want it to be or you can take the time and, and mill up your lumber and make it look a little bit nicer, but either way, it doesn't matter. Cutting these to length, we need, uh, because they're gonna be tripod sawhorses, I'm gonna do eight pieces at exactly three feet, two pieces at 32 and three quarters, and those are the bottom pieces to the I-beam. That's to allow the other piece to sit flush against the sawhorse, and we're gonna put one on one side, one on the other, so that they're stackable, and we'll get into that in a minute. And then uh, the pieces that are straight up and down, those are gonna be 34 and 5 eighths, and that should get us pretty dang close. So let's get into chopping these up, and then gonna run them through the planer just to get them looking nice, and uh, we'll go ahead and start putting this thing together. Okay, and now this is for alignment. Again, you don't need to do it. If you just want to slap some of these together, you can just screw them in. They're gonna, we're gonna make I-beams like this basically. But I'm gonna cut a little groove in mine just for alignment, just for, so that uh, putting them together is really easy. I'm gonna use a dado stack. Uh, you could use a router or you know anything with an edge guide. Just make sure that you have something wide enough to do it in one pass uh, that you're aligning down the middle. If you, like me, are gonna do it in two passes, it's really simple. You just basically cut one way, flip it around, cut the other way, you have perfectly in the middle. So uh, we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna do a little couple test cuts, make sure that we get it fitting nice and tight, and then we're gonna go ahead and put it together. Okay, so this is gonna be our basic setup. This will be our I-beam. Now remember, you've got your longer piece on top and your shorter piece on the bottom. And the reason for that, your solo leg, the leg that's just a little bit shorter than the other ones, is gonna go, we'll pretend these are lined up. It's gonna go like this. And you wanna alternate sides. So on one sawhorse, do it on this side. On one sawhorse, do it on the other. And that's so that they're stackable. And here's another thing too, we're gonna put some glue on the bottom of the I-beam but not the top because we want the top to be removable in case we ever chew it up so bad that we wanna replace it. Also, your top screws, you wanna, I'm gonna, I've got this countersink from, uh, that I got from Bits Bits, there's a 15% off discount code in the description. Um, I'm gonna sink this bad boy deep and the reason, gentlemen, I'm gonna sink it deep, guys, 
because we want our screws to be below where our saw blade is. We know that for safety, we never stick our saw blade more than an eighth inch below our material. So we know that if our screw is a quarter inch down, we're never gonna hit it. So uh, let's get these put together. And then when we get to the angled legs, I'm gonna show you how I do that. Now we're gonna go ahead and put on our angled legs and this is very important. You can see my hole patterns are different here. I took the time to measure them out so that I knew that they wouldn't uh, run into each other. And so what you're gonna do, you're gonna put in the top screws first and that's gonna angle the leg the right way. And then we're gonna go ahead and put on our bottom in a second and the where it goes here, just like this. So when you put in your, your leg, what you wanna do is angle it it just is touching both edges and this is going to get sucked down when you screw it in but you can use a clamp to help you hold it making sure everything is flush and square just like that and watch your fingers on the other side the screws if you're using the same ones you used for the top they may come through that's okay And then you're gonna flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so we just have one more thing to do, which is cut the piece that goes across here. On one sawhorse, you wanna put it on the inside. That's the one that's gonna stack on the bottom and one that is gonna stack on top, you put it on the outside. Uh, other thing I should not do is read a tape measure upside down. As you can tell, this is slanted. This, I said originally 34 and 5 eighths, but it's actually 33 and 5 eighths. I was looking at my tape measure upside down and completely missed it by an inch or read it the opposite way. So I'm gonna trim uh, an inch off of both of these legs and cut the piece that goes across here. And then we'll just use like a, a Japanese pull saw to trim it off at the right angle. So uh, let's get these things wrapped up and then we can jump on them and see how strong they are. Okay, the last thing to do, clearly they stack just fine, but I'm gonna cut a little notch here for the two by four so they fit flush. I don't know, call it OCD or whatever, but uh, I want them to be completely matching uh, in how they fit together. So I'm gonna cut a quick notch and uh, we'll call these done. All right, so really quickly, let's talk about all the benefits to these and then I'll jump on them. Uh, so one, they stack perfectly. That's awesome for shop space, they stack away. Because we milled the lumber, we know that they're dead flat and we know that they're the same height. So it works great for all sorts of leveling purposes, flattening purposes, you could do slabs on them. You could hook rails up to the sides. Um, also the benefit to the tripod, one, it's a little lighter. Two is with three legs, it never is off kilter, no matter what type of terrain you're on, on a hill, whatever, it's never gonna be wobbly. So, um, all right, to prove that these are strong here, let's uh, give this a try here. I'm Jonathan Katz Moses, and I weigh, let's say I weigh 185. Um, but yeah, these are good to go. Look at that, not going anywhere, strong as can be. And the glue's not even dry on the bottom, but there's a plane. So guys, thanks for watching. Stay safe in the shop and have a wonderful day.